You always keep your feet on the ground. Kojo, your story is such a great inspiration. And uh, here on Discovery Plus 223, we have discovered some ordinary Ghanaians who have faced immense challenges but have overcome them. So today's story is about a young lady called Elizabeth. Now, she had a terrible, terrible accident. Um, she fell in a coma. Coming out of it, half her body was basically handicapped. But the bigger story is what she's been able to do, not just for herself, but for the community and the society around her. And we want mm -hmm. you to take a look at this. And we'll talk about it afterwards. My name is Elizabeth Akriyanyakum Patterson. This is my story. I was raised in Ghana up until I was 10 years old. My mom won the visa lotto, and my family was told to go to the United States. I was 10, my sister was eight. We were told that we were going for a better education. Elizabeth was in high school when an unfortunate thing happened to the family that turned the family upside down. She was involved in a very, very bad accident. Every single time she'd go into the operation room, we were just hoping and praying that she'd come back. I was in a coma for about six weeks. When I came out of the coma um, and started speaking and eventually started walking, I took my first step and I was tired. I stopped for a little bit. And um, my dad said that, remember you used to run? I used to run back in high school. I ran cross country and track. And the first thing he said to me was, think about going back to the track field and running again. So. I think that's always been my motivation. Just, I dream and I dream that I'm running. Someday, someday I will be running again. At that time, I didn't think about her education at all because all I was thinking about was her living. Um, and then when she got to the point where she could um, talk again, move again, do all of those things, I think eventually I knew that she would go back to school and finish her education because my sister has always been very, very driven very, very stubborn and very, very determined. And I think all those things in that setting really help when you're in a bad situation, really help you to move forward. I really was kind of disoriented about what, everything that was going on. I never thought that I was not in school. Even though I was in the hospital bed and every day um, doctors and nurses were coming to look after me, I never thought that there was no chance of me going back to school. And I was getting tutored in the hospital by a teacher who was coming every day. Inpatient and outpatient, it took us for like two years. That hospital was in the middle of a university campus. So I'll put her in the wheelchair, take her out for fresh air, and then she will see the university students walking around and she will start crying. She was determined to go on with her education, even though um, her diagnosis for the accident was traumatic brain injury. I have a lot of co cognitive issues also, and as a result, I have a learning disability. I learn a little bit slower than most people, and I co comprehend a little bit more delayed, and my vision was also affected. My motivation was to get better and to graduate from high school. Since my parents always stressed and insisted that my sister and I succeed and do well in school, my motivation is always school, school, school. Beyond that, I really didn't know that I was gonna be able to go to college and get, let alone a master's degree. I didn't think I was gonna be able to do that. I graduated from high school in 2004, and then I stayed in the US for a little bit to do more therapies to make sure that I was gonna be okay. When I came to Ghana in 2006, I volunteered at the World Links Academy in Kumasi. And while there, I encountered a one girl student named Priscilla, and she was always coming to me asking for extra help after everybody had been dismissed. And after speaking to her, I found out that she was struggling in school and um, her family was saying that maybe it's because it's the work of the devil. That's why she wasn't doing well in school. And so I found that very heartbreaking. And over and over, I always encounter these young women, young girls who seem like they're very driven, but poverty is the common denominator for all of them because the family was poor or struggling to pay fees. And then in 2013, I traveled to South Africa with 
with NYU on a study abroad program. I went there with the mindset of doing my research study on girls' education because it's been something that I've been passionate about. But while there, because of my physical challenges, and so I found myself very vulnerable, asking my classmates and anyone who I encountered to help me out. And then I changed my mind and started researching how um, kids with disabilities or special needs get access to school. And it was cemented for me when I visited one of the schools in um, Johannesburg. And then this young girl named um, Lungali and I interacted, but she wasn't speaking. And I found out that she's been tongue-tied from birth. And so for me, as someone who very recently, due to the accident, was not able to have speech, and my mom also told me that when I was younger, I was tongue-tied. I, I empathize with her, and I think it just kind of confirmed for me that I need to be advocating for girls and girls like Lungley who have special needs or disabilities. I'm the founder and executive director of the Girls Education Initiative of Ghana, GIG. We support girls in the Ashanti and the greater Accra regions with academic and financial support so they can survive and succeed through higher education. I think it's Elizabeth's way of saying thank you, Lord, for what God has done for her. There is no other way for her to thank God or to thank everyone, but also to extend what she has received to the needy girls. I often say that education saved my life, and so for families and parents, I would urge them to always, always have that in their mind because if you fail or if you neglect to educate all your children, you're, you're doing them a disservice, you're doing your country a disservice. Elizabeth is a fighter. Elizabeth is selfless. Elizabeth is a teacher. I always call her my teacher. She's my hero. My keys to success are education and my family. When I was struggling and fighting for my life in the hospital, it was the drive to, to be in, educated and be in school and graduate, that's what made me keep going and survive. And I would say my family because my family always pushes me and encourages me to do the best that I can.